What's the Python on hardware? Okay, that is not the Python on hardware newsletter. <laughs> oh, people see behind the curtain. That is not the Python on hardware newsletter. Um, oh. It's an infinity. Anyway, this is what we see. Yeah, it's an infinity mirror. So as I um, convince our video processing okay. application to go to the right browser, it did. Cool. Hey, did you, did you guys know that this is live? Yeah. This is live. That was a time tunnel. Um, anywho. Um, so this week, um, you can check out the newsletter. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a Python 3.1.2 release. Some people really pay close attention to these. Open Hardware Summit, it's Open Hardware Month. You can check out the summit they announced, probably gonna be in April or so. Or so. Um, lots of Raspberry Pi 5 news. And then um, the highlights from Hacktoberfest, where you can join in and do like a PR for CircuitPython, we're participating. But um, check out all the projects. There's always too many to go over. A um, lot of neat e-ink and displays, lots of display stuff this week and more. But the news, I think the big news is because we have a sibling, which is MicroPython. So CircuitPython is the um, big, broad board support education, easy to use. Um, we're, you know, we wanted to go on everything. Um, and MicroPython is a core it's built on. If you're in the Linux world, you know, there's different flavors of Linux. There's like the kernel, which has there's like kernel and then kernel everyone moment, builds their thing. Distributions. So we're one of the supporters, both um, philosophically and financially for MicroPython. So when we see a new release, we're excited because that means we can start doing integration. So Lady Ada, what were the big highlights for MicroPython um, that we're interested yeah. in that we're going to be uh, adding upstreaming and more? Yes. So one thing to note is um, we do uh, merge with upstream pretty common, uh, pretty often. And actually right now we are in the middle of doing an upstream merge. Uh, that is what Dan and Scott have been working on for the last couple of weeks. They're working very hard. Uh, people who've done uh, merges and have a lot of merge conflicts. There's, it's, you know, there's a lot of code that's shared, but there's also stuff that's gone different. And so it takes a lot of time, but we will be integrating 121 into CircuitPython. And I think I think the goal is to do it uh, before we release 9 beta, um, CircuitPython 9 beta. Okay, so now you know, like, why is this important? Because this stuff will be, some of it will affect us, uh, CircuitPython users. But what's interesting, I thought about this, and we discussed this a couple of weeks ago, is there's a lot of stylistic changes happening to MicroPython that I think were inspired by CircuitPython. Well, hopefully, I, I think that we, it's yeah, things go bi-directionally. Like there's there's stuff that yeah. are like, oh, this is a good idea. And then I'm sure there's things that are like, oh, we like the way you did this, or yeah. we like the way you can access things on a USB drive, or the naming convention. Or yeah. This. So the the big change is you know that is uh, it's it's making a difference in people's code is they're getting rid of the U prefix built in modules. So you used to have to import UOS instead of import OS. In C Python would be called OS, and in MicroPython would be yeah. UOS. U is like micro. And it'd be like U storage or U whatever, like U time. Not a big deal, but it's it's not the same if you're learning Python and then you have to kind of say like, oh, for this, you have to remember to do this. Yeah. And there's a couple of reasons why they're doing it, but I think a lot of it is like, you know, trying to create more um, back and forth integration between C Python code and MicroPython code because, you know, and this is something that we do, a lot of the Adafruit example code and libraries will run on a Raspberry Pi running C Python or run yeah. on a desktop, which I think is really cool. We only have to write one driver, one example code, and you can use a temperature yeah. sensor, an e-ink display on your, you know, desktop Mac, on your Raspberry Pi, on your orange Omega single board computer, um, or on a SAMD51 or RP2040. And so, I think that yeah, this was one of the decisions we made really early that was a, a reason why we had to uh, fork and, and have a different implementation, this distribution, because MicroPython was really like, nope, we want to keep the U prefix stuff. And we're like, we really don't want to keep the U prefix stuff. And so, you know, we, we split there. Um, but it was really great to see MicroPython um, go with that same decision. I, personally, I think it's a great decision. I think, I think it's good to have MicroPython well, move in with CircuitPython, and it means that MicroPython CircuitPython is becoming a little bit more uh, cross-compatible. I mean, again, yeah. we're always merging upstream, and we contribute as well, um, but I think it's good yeah, to we'll, that. Our stuff will be on different chips, and then if you go to circuitpython.org, you can see all the different boards. Like, mm -hmm. MicroPython has a specific set of boards they support. We have yeah. a whole other set, um, and then people make their own boards, and they run their own businesses around it. Um, for educators, 
it's hard to um you already have to make a bunch of choices and it seems like if you're in the education space people are learning python so this just makes it easier so if you're learning python or you're in a workshop setting you're learning python and then this makes it you don't even have to remember oh let me put a micro a little u yeah. or something um so it should help even like documentation and if you can have code portability run it on that new raspberry pi run it on my i dig it yeah a couple other so, things um yes. they you know esp32 they moved to idf5 that's actually something that we're also doing which is kind of good um idf5 uh is going to support the newest esp32 chips um, it's a big change, um, but MicroPython and CircuitPython both updated it. They added VLE support for Pico W, which is great. We haven't done that in CircuitPython yet, but we're thinking about it, how we could do it. Um, import stuff has been tweaked to optimize. I think that's probably going to be, you know, that stuff, the core implementation, not port specific stuff, does get merged into CircuitPython. So we'll probably be able to benefit from um, their speed ups on importing. Uh, they added ESP now. I think we do too. You know, in CircuitPython, we added a PR and they have a LoRa module as well. So um, some good stuff. You know, I always tell people there are some things that MicroPython supports that CircuitPython doesn't and vice versa. There's space for both of us. Yeah. I mean, the good news is you can choose. <laughs> um, there's a lot of electronics out there where you have to use their ID, their cloud thing, their thing and you're kind of stuck with it. And once you're stuck with it, that's the end of it. Um, it's nice to be able to run whatever you want to run, right, right tool, right job. Um, also experiment. MIT licensing. Try them all out. It's great. Um, so that is Python Hardware News. You can get the newsletter every single week. It has all this and more delivered to your inbox. Totally separate site, adafruitdaily.com. The way you know for sure, we are not going to spam you because we don't like spam even more than you don't like spam.